Hey, what's up guys, what's going on? I'm your host TJ today on the Monster Bass YouTube channel. Uh, I'm the actual host of Yak Pack Outdoors. But today what we're gonna be doing guys is we're gonna be talking about how I approach and fish a pond, okay? So I am notoriously known as a, a, a pond hopper, okay? I like to think of myself as a pond hopping professional, okay? I'm gonna get my own segment on MLF one day, Pond Hopper Pros, no, I'm just kidding. So while we're here at the pond today, I just got done filming a really cool video uh, that's gonna go up on my channel here in the next couple days. But what, what I'm gonna talk to you guys about is when I immediately walk up to a pond, what are the first things that I look at, that I search for, what are the first baits that I use? And then I'm gonna tell you guys my top three baits that I throw every time I go pond fishing, guys. So with that being said, let's get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do, guys, is I'm gonna put a screenshot of the actual pond behind me. I'm gonna put that on the screen right now, and I'm gonna highlight the areas that I would fish or that I would target first. And 99% uh, of the time, guys, that's gonna work. Uh, and I can attest to that working because I literally just fished this pond. I just did it So I'm gonna kind of highlight some of the areas that I think are key that these largemouth bass are gonna hone in on So right here guys We've got a concrete wall with two drain pipes going under going directly over to that body of water And now that it's about to be summertime guys What these fish will do is they'll sit in those drain pipes getting ready to ambush smaller fish that swim in front of them So any kind of chatter bait spinner bait uh, you know a Sanko or anything like that a creature bait anything you can get in front of those drain pipes guys That's gonna be really key matter of fact. There's a largemouth bass sitting right there right now. Let me see Let's See if you guys can see him There he goes So as I try to explain it to you guys, there's a fish sitting right there I mean, that's just the proof is in the pudding guys All right So the next thing that I immediately notice when getting to this specific body of water if you look all the way around it guys except for right here at this pipe you'll see this uh this massive grass line okay so that's also going to be key because in these hot hot months these hot summer months what's going to happen is these bigger fish are going to sit down under that thick stuff okay they're going to sit in there so that's when you're punching and and stuff like that's going to come into play and this grass line right here right there gets a little bit more shallow and the grass line right off of this guys it, it, as soon as it gets like right out here into the water uh, it gradually starts to go down. So those big fish are going to be sitting there. Those big fish are going to want to sit in this stuff right here, guys. And that's because it, it, it's going to be cooler throughout the day, okay? When, when it's these hot summer months, uh, this water is going to warm up really, really quick. So the, the more shade and the more cover they can find to stay cool, it's just like you guys. When you're out on the water, whether it be boat, kayak, bank, doesn't matter. You know, you get hot and you start sweating. You know, I ain't gonna say the fish start sweating, but, you know, not, I don't know if that happens or not. But uh, these fish get hot too, right? So they want to stay cooled off. Um, dude, not even kidding. Matter of fact, there's another largemouth cruising the weed line. Where'd he go? Right there. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see that, but he's, <laughs> how crazy is this, guys? There was one sitting right there where I said he'd be, and there's one sitting right here. Right over, oh man, right there in the weed line, guys. All right, guys, the next thing I'm going to be looking for is any kind of overhang cover or in the water structure, anything like that. So if you've got any stand up timber or cut down trees or logs or anything like that in the water, uh, I'm gonna be looking for stuff like that. And if I can't find anything like that, the next best thing is overhang cover. This right here just highlights that absolutely perfectly. You can stand right here at this angle that I'm at. You can stand right here at this angle and you can pitch baits literally right up under those trees, guys. And like I just got done saying about that grass line, you guys can see this grass line right here. Like I just got done saying about that, those fish are gonna wanna find somewhere cool and somewhere shady to hang out under. And this whole line of trees right here, this is gonna do it. All right guys, the next thing we're gonna be looking for is any kind of running water. And I know you guys can probably hear it, but this fountain right here, what's gonna happen right here is with that water moving like that, what's gonna happen is that's gonna continuously regenerate the oxygen in the water, okay? That water flowing like that. So wherever you can find any kind of flowing water, Always, always make it a priority to cast to it, through it, beyond it, over it, under it, in it, everything, guys. Right here is some of the submerged structure that I was kind of talking about. Granted, that's not wood. Uh, there's actually a lot of fish sitting on it right there. I don't know if you guys can see through the water or not. I'll try to polarize it and see if you get, if you can. But uh, right here, this is a concrete slab of some sort. And uh, there's fish sitting all around it. So again, the proof is in the pudding. They love to sit around stuff like this, especially with this grass line and that structure right there. All right, guys, and before we talk about the three baits I mentioned earlier, uh, the last thing that I'm gonna target when I fish 
anything like this, okay? Now, this specific pond, this body of water, I'm actually lucky, and everything that I usually search for when I go to a pond, this one has. But this is another thing, okay? This is a little dam right here. There's another body of water right there. This water flows into there when it overfills, so you could definitely fish that over there as well. I'm sure there's some fish in there, but we're gonna talk about this one. So any, actually guys, I caught three fish right here, just off of this, right here in this deep water at this dam, okay? So fish are gonna stay stacked right here if they're not necessarily like super hot, but there's deep water right here. The deeper, it'll be cooler water. So they're gonna be sitting right here waiting for you to stop by with a hook and a bait. All right guys, now that we're back home, I'm gonna go over the three types of baits that I use when I go pond fishing the most, okay? Now these are baits that I'm using to search for fish or when I've found them to, to like really key in and, and hone in and, and catch those fish. But uh, starting off, when I go to a pond, one of the very first things I'm gonna do is throw a moving bait, something loud, something with a lot of attention grabbing attributes, okay? So what we've got here, we've got a chatter bait with just a little swim bait trailer on it. Uh, black and blue is 99% of the time black and blue chatterbait is my go-to uh, You know for chatterbait colors specifically you can you can never go wrong with a white or a black and blue or something like that But uh, down here in the southern region, especially in South Florida We have a lot of the tannic looking water like sweet tea basically so this black and blue really is a good color down here also, we've got the Booyah uh, spinnerbait right here. And what I really love about this specific spinnerbait is number one, that it's got a mustad hook on it, so it's already really stout. And it's got the two different color willow blades on it, paired with this white skirt right here. This is my all-time favorite color spinnerbait right here, guys. Solid white with uh, silver and gold willow leaf blades on it. Oh my goodness. Literally the perfect spinnerbait. And another thing I'm gonna use for uh, search bait, you know, trying to find where the fish are at, uh, rattle traps, okay? Now these things, you guys can hear that. These things are just extremely loud and obnoxious. So uh, these are always gonna be good to tell you if there are fish uh, in that pond or that body of water that you're fishing. All right, so moving right along, let's say the bite slows down, okay? Let's say the fish stop hitting those moving baits. The next thing I'm gonna go to is stick baits. Okay, so right here we've got a solid black trick worm. This is just a regular zoom trick worm. And we've got a black with red flake Senko, right? So this right here, guys, whether you Texas rig them, wacky rig them, put them on a shaky head, anything like that, guys, you can, you know, weighted, weightless. And there's unlimited ways to be able to fish these soft plastics, okay? And when that bite slows down, guys, and they're looking for something more subtle, uh, this is gonna be your money maker, no doubt. And then last, but certainly not least, we've got little swim baits, right? So this is just a Zoom Super Fluke right here. This is the split tail fluke. All time favorite, guys. Rig this weightless or with like a eighth ounce weight or something like that. And uh, you just jerk it through the water. And I'm telling you guys, it triggers really big bites. Uh, right here, we've got a Gambler Big Easy. These South Florida fish, uh, these Florida, Alabama, Georgia fish in general, they really love these, uh, these big easies are these specific color swim baits as well. Just because it matches those bluegill and those bait fish so, so good. And then right here, we've got another white swim bait. Uh, this one specifically is a paddle tail. So paddle tail, split tail, just depends on what I'm trying to do. If I'm trying to continuously slow roll it, it'll be a paddle tail. If I'm twitching and popping it, it's gonna be a, a split tail. Those two just, uh, they work better in those certain circumstances. But anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in to the Monster Bass YouTube channel. We here at Monster Bass, all of us, uh, we greatly, greatly appreciate your support. And uh, we look forward to sending you guys the, the most dope subscription tackle box on the planet. That is our goal. We, we are gonna give you guys the absolute best baits to be able to go out and catch a monster bass. But uh, anyways, thanks again for watching guys. We'll catch y'all next time.